Well, hello everyone. I'm Sammy Higab, and I'll be taking you through uh, learning programming by examples. We're going to focus on today uh, giving you a quick um, history of programming languages. Uh, in particular, I'm going to give you an introduction into C and C++ programming. Um, and then I'm going to move on to Java. Um, object oriented programming concepts will be introduced as well. Uh, in both the the Java and C++ um, in in parallel, so both languages you'll get a, a good sort of um, you know a, a, a good taste of both languages at the same time. Um, and then I'm going to do something interesting uh, in programming, which is the GUI, the graphical user interface, um, and that's when programming starts to become interesting because you're not just like developing a, a console. Or, or you know like a text based application you start to see some graphical stuff um, like windows and buttons and forms and stuff like that um, the one thing that I am going to try to cover as well um, as we end the lesson is um, the database side of um, programming so what we'll be doing we'll be creating a form and then connecting it to a database using the, the JDBC um, connector for MySQL. So if you don't know what MySQL is, don't worry. Um, you can probably search on, on, on the internet and get a little introduction to MySQL as well. Or I'm just going to briefly um, go through what MySQL is anyway um, for just the purpose of connecting it to a Java, um, the Java code as well. Um, which you can download the JDBC from MySQL website. Uh, you can also download a similar connector if you're writing uh, the application in C++. So you could just look for the C++ um, MySQL connector. Um, on the right here is just some of the examples uh, I did part of the workshop uh, uh, that was run by um, the Software Development Society in Aberdeen. Um, we are not going to be able to do the examples. Um, the real, the reason, just keeping it short um, in in this video, uh, so it can be just short and concise, and then you can sort of try to benefit from as much as possible in in the short space of time. So, what I am going to do is I've got taken some screenshots of um, uh, the code, and I'll just be talking over it and explaining certain points uh, in in the programs. So you just get an idea and then you can make an attempt yourself at writing a program. Um, but after we, we, we cover all that, I am going to start doing some live coding um, as part of the example of developing a, a student record application. Now, just to make it clear, I'm not going to develop the full-fledged application, which does all the stuff like you know check your student uh, you know like student records and and you know, the course details and the user can log in and all that stuff I'm not going to do that but I am going to sort of introduce um, uh, the, the idea of um, uh, creating a form and then you enter the user uh, the student ID and his name and it will just populate the database it will just insert it into the database it's just to introduce the the idea of the, the GUI and JDBC working together. Okay, so let's make a start. Um, right, just a history of uh, the programming languages. Like I said before, um, Java is a, a C++ uh, based language, and C++ was evolved from C, which evolved from B, and I'm not going to go back to A. Uh, but it, that evolved from another language which initially started off uh, in, in 1967 uh, a language called uh, BCPL and that was written uh, to uh, to create basically um, operating systems in the early days uh, a man by the name of Ken Thompson took features from uh, BCPL and basically implement it in, in, in the B language and then he went on to develop Unix. So if you've heard of Linux and, and Linux is from Unix, so in the early days that's, that's what they used to develop the Unix system. Another gentleman came along called Dennis Ritchie um, and he was in the Bell's laboratory um, and, and he evolved the B language so he kind of summarized it and he created a language called B and uh, he took that B language which came from 
BCPL and um, and and then he took it to uh, C in 1972. Uh, C programming became very popular, uh, but uh, at some point, you know, it was in competition with another language called Smalltalk, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and because um, that was a full-fledged um, object-oriented programming language. So, in 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 about 1980. Um, they took C, the C language and all they did is they added uh, the concepts of uh, objects, creating objects and stuff like that. Now at this stage do not worry if you do not understand what objects are and classes are and all that stuff because I am going to explain it. Uh, but for now you could just say look they've just taken one language and added some extra um, features on top and they called it C++. Uh, the good thing about C++, which I love coding in, is it's a hybrid language. So if I wanted to write uh, in C, just a sequential program, I can do that. As well as if I wanted to just go full into object oriented uh, programming, I could do that as well. Um, in other languages, uh, like Smalltalk, which I kind of like mentioned, um, that's purely object oriented programming. So you can't do any se sequential um, C style coding um, just in sequence. Everything has to be an object. Everything from you know a car, a human being, um, something that's printing to a screen, connect to a database. It, all these things have to be defined as objects in in the language. Um, so that concept, that's the only that's the only thing, and that was developed by Xerox, um, the photocopying company. Uh, and then Sun Microsystem came along in 1991. Um, and they, under a project code name Green, um, they decided, well, let's create another object oriented language, pure object oriented, and they called it initially Oak, and then they discovered um, there was already a language called Oak. So they then, uh, after visiting a local coffee shop, discovered the word Java, and they said, oh, well, let's use that instead, and that's when uh, the language was um, named Java. Uh, and uh, Java is good language everything it's much easier to learn than C++ obviously uh, but again it's only pure object oriented language which is sufficient for most of the projects that you might be involved in anyway um, and it's generally taught in universities and colleges now so it's a popular language uh, for the main reason that it's a cross-platform language so basically you can write the program um, on your PC and then it would run on the Mac that's just a simple example um, there was another company as well came along in the scene um, in the form it was called uh, Next Step and that was later on owned by Apple and uh, what Next Step done is they took um, C language and they took a um, small talk language and they smashed them together and created uh, a new language called Objective-C. Now Objective-C is used for um, you know iPhone development um, you know for the iPhone, iPad, iTouch, all that stuff um, Apple creating applications for Apple um, you can use Objective-C for that so that's the that's the main language for Apple uh, the main language for Microsoft is C Sharp, which is derived again from um, C++. So they took C++ and then they made it C Sharp, and that's the competition. You've got Java in one side, you've got Objective C from Apple, and you've got C Sharp on the other end, and then C++ beats them all up and wins the game. So. Right, I've got a notepad opened here. I'm just going to go through each concept uh, that I've mentioned in here. I'm going to explain what all these um, characters mean. Uh, so whenever you see this in the code, it basically means a code block. It's just a block of code. So there's going to be some code here, and in between there's going to be these squiggly brackets. Uh, once we start seeing an example, we start to it starts to make sense but for now um, that could be a code block so we open a we open a block of code and we enter all the relevant stuff in here and then we 
sort of close it with the same the opposite direction of the squiggly bracket um, interestingly as well is if if you done a bit of mathematics you always write um, you know like you, com you combine certain parts of the, the equation w within brackets so you can say something like a z plus I thought z there x plus x and then minus so you're quite familiar with that I'm sure if you've done some basic mathematics in your life so you know that's just the idea you've got these brackets uh, but also they're commonly used um, for the if uh, or for which we're going to cover shortly um, and you what you do is you put the conditions within these brackets so if x is less than 10 you'd um, you'd basically use it for your conditions the other thing is we've got these two forward slashes and they basically mean uh, comments so if you're writing a comment you would use these forward slashes if you're going to do a block comment you could do it with one of those so you star and then backslash forward slash backslash if you wanted to write i plus one equals i what you would do is you would write i plus plus as shorthand if you wanted to put i minus i equals sorry i minus one equals i so you, you decrement by one you could write it as shorthand like that so that's just another way of doing things um, also the equal sign if you've done a bit of mathematics you know you can you know the equal it means equal something uh, but here you can use it as an assignment so that's used as assigning a value into something so for example if I put i equals 10 it basically assigned 10 the value 10 inside i very simple now one thing if you've noticed every time I write something I keep putting these this um, semicolon at the end of it um, the reason is just like any language um, there's some sort of grammatical uh, syntax in programming it's like no other language anyway so it's, it's got its own grammar grammar rules as well so when you finish with a statement you would end it with a semicolon now a statement is just basically a line of like a command instruction so I put instruction for example and then I put a semicolon at the end and that ends that line and it goes to the next line if I forget that it will crash because it well what where's the end of the line it hasn't ended yet and it will just try to execute the next instruction and then it would get confused and it sort of start doing some funny errors okay we covered that section now um, next thing we're going to talk about is libraries now the libraries um, 